Matlock is a classic TV series from 1986 that follows the life of Ben Matlock, a defense attorney who solves and wins tough cases with his sharp mind and street smarts. This show is full of twists that will make you laugh, gasp, and maybe even shed a tear. As we dive into the world of Matlock, think about a scene that really stuck with you or a moment you shared with someone while watching it. Maybe it was a clever courtroom revelation or a touching interaction between the characters that left a lasting impression. We all have those special TV moments that stay with us and we'd love to hear yours. Share your most memorable Matlock experience in the comments and let's relive those surprising, funny, and touching times together. Problem with that? Okay. All those in favor of a guilty verdict. One, two. Matlock, the television series starring Andy Griffith as Ben Matlock, a criminal defense attorney, has garnered a following for its portrayal of courtroom drama. The show often draws comparisons to Perry Mason, another legal drama known for its intelligent characters and respect for the judicial process. Matlock, a Harvard-educated lawyer, is known for his high fees and his knack for defending innocent clients accused of murder. The series diverges from Perry Mason in its approach to legal procedures, often showcasing Matlock's disregard for the rules of evidence, which contrasts sharply with the meticulous legal process depicted in Perry Mason. The show has been critiqued for its unrealistic portrayal of legal proceedings, such as the discovery of a newspaper-wrapped candlestick that provides an alibi for Matlock's client, which the police and district attorney's office had overlooked. This and other similar plot points have led some viewers, particularly those with legal backgrounds, to question the plausibility of the scenarios presented. Despite these criticisms, Matlock remains a staple of the legal drama genre, with its unique character dynamics and courtroom strategies. The minute they take them, they go into shock. Their blood pressure drops, their heart can stop beating, and they can die. Nancy Stafford, who once admired the Andy Griffith show as a child, eventually joined the cast of a popular legal drama in its second season, taking over the role previously held by Linda Pearl. Her childhood resemblance to Don Nuts, noted in an interview, marked a curious prelude to her later work alongside Andy Griffith. In a twist of fate, Keen Holiday's legal troubles during the show's third season led to unexpected script changes, leaving the cast and crew uncertain about future storylines. This was due to his rehabilitation attendance, which was mandated after his arrest. The series faced a decline in viewership after its sixth season, prompting NBC's new entertainment president to shift focus away from shows with predominantly older audiences. Despite this setback, the show found a new home at ABC, where it continued for three additional seasons after relocating production to North Carolina before its eventual conclusion in 1995. You telling me you're gonna kill somebody? That's right. You can go now. In the show, the lead character, much like his previous role, is seen driving a Ford car, highlighting a connection to his past portrayal. The actor behind the character initially had reservations about the role due to the character's less admirable traits, such as vanity and thriftiness. A notable twist occurs in an episode where a witness's courtroom testimony starkly contrasts her earlier account, leading to suspicions of outside influence. However, she asserts that her courtroom version is the truth, implying she was manipulated during the initial interview. This twist adds a layer of complexity to the narrative, showcasing the unpredictable nature of legal proceedings. I cannot prove it. Mrs. Klein is prepared to testify. In the landscape of television, the production company Viacom was notable for holding the rights to both the classic The Andy Griffith Show and the series in question at its launch. The lead actor maintained a lasting friendship with co-stars Nancy Stafford and Clarence Gilliard Jr., which continued until his passing in 2012. Unique for its time, the show introduced an anthology-style format with clip shows that revisited past narratives, a novel concept among long-running dramatic series. Episodes like The Vendetta and The Kidnapper were part of this innovative approach, allowing viewers to relive key moments and storylines. Drawing from the life and expertise of Bobby Lee Cook, a defense attorney in Georgia, the character of Ben Matlock was crafted to bring a touch of reality to the courtroom drama. Andy Griffith, fresh from his nostalgic return in Return to Maybury, stepped into the role, bringing with him the charm that had endeared him to audiences for years. 
Clarence Gilliard Jr. became a familiar face on the show, appearing in nearly every episode until the production's shift to North Carolina in the seventh year. His subsequent commitment to Walker, Texas Ranger, posed a challenge to his schedule, reflecting the often complex logistics behind long-running television productions. Now, don't you think it would have been stupid of me to kill Peter and frame my client in? In portraying the lead role, the actor shared a common thread with his character, both being widowers. His dedication to the role was evident as he traveled weekly from North Carolina to Los Angeles for six years. In 1995, he chose to conclude his participation to focus on family time, though he returned to his iconic role in a special appearance in 1997. Faces. In the show, the lead character's status as a widower is a sensitive topic, reflecting his personal loss. His daughter Charlene is similarly affected, having lost her mother at a young age, a fact that is sparingly mentioned, underscoring the impact of such a loss on their lives. Nancy Stafford, who played a significant role, was absent for a number of episodes starting in 1988 due to scheduling conflicts. Additionally, Keen Holiday's tenure on the show ended after the third season as he dealt with personal issues related to substance use. I bought you something. What's this for? Or nothing. Nancy Stafford and Clarence Gilliard Jr. shared a positive working relationship on the show, but over the years, they lost contact. Gilliard moved to Nevada, where he keeps busy teaching college students and directing theater. Linda Pearl left after the first season, feeling her character's relationship with her father was not given enough attention. The show's focus remained on the father's legal cases. Dean Hargrove, the executive producer, acknowledged Pearl's maturity despite the expected father-daughter dynamic. Andy Griffith returned to his role for a special appearance on another show in 1997, two years after the series concluded. It was revealed that his character, advised to invest in the eight-track tape industry, lost his savings, leading to his frugal habits of buying inexpensive suits and eating hot dogs, which persisted even after regaining financial stability. What is that? Andy Griffith's dedication to his craft extended beyond acting, he was deeply involved in the scripting process for his television projects, ensuring every detail was to his standard. In the courtroom drama series, the lead character, known for his southern charm and legal acumen, was not one to be underestimated. When betrayed, he revealed a formidable side, ensuring justice was served with a sharp wit and unwavering resolve. Meanwhile, Tyler Hudson, another character, brought a background of military discipline to the team, having served as a lieutenant in the United States Army. This diverse background added a layer of depth to the investigative team's dynamic. And I said, you don't have a lot of luck with women, do you? Overcoming challenges is a recurring theme in the life of a defense attorney, as demonstrated when he shares a personal anecdote about repeating the third grade, highlighting that the path to success is not always straightforward. This character's connection with Ford Automobiles extends beyond his earlier television roles, maintaining a consistent choice of vehicle across different series. Music also plays a role in his story, with a spontaneous rendition of Peach Pickin' Time in Georgia interrupted by a call from the Capitol, and later a full performance alongside his investigator after a visit to North Carolina. Friend. I call your attention to... In the courtroom drama that captured audiences, the production process was as intense as the cases portrayed. Filming a single episode required a full eight days, with the courtroom scenes alone taking up to three days. The dedication to authenticity was evident in the meticulous approach to these pivotal moments. Randy Travis Guest starred as Billy Wheeler, a country singer greatly admired by the show's protagonist, Ben. This casting choice added a layer of realism to the narrative, reflecting the show's commitment to blending fiction with real-world elements. Nancy Stafford, who brought Michelle Thomas to life, shared insights into the filming intricacies. She revealed that Andy Griffith, who played the lead role, would memorize his courtroom monologues, allowing him to deliver them in a single, uninterrupted take. This method not only showcased Griffith's exceptional memory, but also his ability to command the scene, often earning him standing ovations from the cast and crew. 
Griffith's tenure as the titular character outlasted his previous iconic role, although with fewer episodes. His portrayal in 193 episodes of the legal series stood in contrast to the 249 episodes of his earlier eponymous show. This fact underscores the enduring appeal of the character and the actor's ability to reinvent himself for a new generation of viewers. Court is adjourned. <laughs> Years before they became known for their roles in the blockbuster film Titanic, Billy Zane and Francis Fisher were part of the cast in a popular legal drama. They portrayed characters unrelated to their later roles as the fiancé and mother of Titanic's leading lady. Keen Holiday, another cast member, had been a casual viewer of The Andy Griffith Show, recognizing its characters despite not following every episode. The series also featured Clarence Gilliard Jr. and Daniel Roebuck as private investigators. Both actors had roles in films with Paul Gleason as an LAPD officer, with Gilliard appearing in Die Hard and Roebuck in Money Talks. I'm sorry. You wanted to see me. Yeah, Julie, I don't know how this happened, but there's a witness's statement.